<laughs> you drinking Kool-Aid to start your day? I want to be tough. I started doing MMA. I got inspired. I was watching uh, Larry Nasser. You guys remember Larry Nasser? He was like the serial child. This is not going to be a pro Larry Nasser take. I don't want to... I'm not going to be like, that guy was all right. Uh, no, he sucks. He's in jail now. He was like uh, the gymnastics guy. He's in jail. But remember at the trial, there was like a big trial for him, and it was on the news. And during the trial, one of the victims, her father, stood up, and he said, Your Honor, can I have five minutes alone with this demon? You guys remember that, right? I think that guy was going to beat the shit out of Larry Nassar. The judge said, no, you're not allowed to do that. The judge was like, you may not. But the dad didn't give up. He said, how about one minute alone? He tried negotiating. That was the best part. Like, the judge was going to be like, all right, one minute. Come on up here. Get these tables out of here. He asked twice. Come on, hit the clock. Get him. <laughs> he said no again. That's not part of the judicial system, unfortunately, but... It inspired me because I was like, I want to be like this dad. And I'm not a dad at all, but I was like, I want to be like that guy, taking matters into his own hands. He's going to beat the shit out of Larry Nasser. I was like, I got to learn how to fight, though, because I don't know how to fight. I couldn't do that. If I was in his position, and I was like, can I get five minutes alone with this piece of shit? And the judge was like, you got it. I'd have to be like, wait, what? Oh, shit. I just wanted to impress my wife. I don't want to fight the guy. Because you can't lose that fight. You can't be like, let me get five minutes alone with this son of a bitch and come out five minutes later with two black eyes and a bloody nose crying. And be like, Your Honor, can I get three more minutes and two friends? Is that possible? How about one minute and a weapon? I want to teach this son of an onion a lesson. The other day we're playing, this is how things have gotten in my house, okay? Here's a very good example of how, where it's gone. We're playing a version of hide and seek where my wife and I have to decide together where to look. She likes that. She's like, Mama, you tell Papa where to look. Okay, well, fine. So she's over there hiding like this, just in plain sight. And my wife and I, <laughs> my wife's like, why don't you look under the bed? I'm like, okay. okay. <laughs> she's not there. And then she says, why don't you look in the linen closet? Okay, so I open the closet. She goes, that's not the linen closet. We don't put that in there anymore. All right, fucking Jesus. All right, I'll look in. So I look in that. Why would she be in that closet? It has shelves. She can't stand in a shelf. Well, maybe she's crawled in a shelf. Now we're having a fight about where to look for this fucking kid who's standing right there. So I got mad, right? I'm like, all right, fuckface. That's what I like to call people when I'm mad and I don't know their name. Fuckface, I find, is a good way of going about it. Because you can't really get offended if somebody calls you fuckface, can you? If I went, hey, fuckface, and you were like, well, you want to go? What, you wanna... Like, you would actually be a fuckface if you wanted to fight if some guy called you fuckface. Because really, there's worse things you could be called than fuckface. What is a fuckface? It's the face you make when you fuck. That's all it is. It's... This, this is the fuck face, look. Is that really so bad, is it? You don't even have to say it to somebody. Next time somebody cuts you off in traffic, pull up a sign and go, hey! You just call me fuck face? But don't roll your eyes, don't roll your eyes when you don't be like, cause then, then you're cum face. You don't want to be cum face. You just want to be fuck face. <laughs> I know. I have a very fucked up sense of humor. I do. But you have to understand where I get my sense of humor from. Uh, I get my sense of humor from my family, specifically my mom and dad, even more specifically my dad. Uh, now, my parents are not dwarves. What? I know. I tell a lot of people that, that sometimes they're like, what? Like, cause they don't believe that uh, tall people can have dwarf children. They like look at me and when they ask me like, hey Brad, where are your mom and dad from? They think I'm gonna say, Narnia. Uh, <laughs> that's not where they're from. And there's no dwarves in my family at all. I am the only one. So they weren't expecting it. And so like my dad is this really athletic dude, tall athletic dude. And he thought his, you know, his wife was gonna give birth to a football player. Instead she shot out a football. And, <laughs> You gotta ask yourself, what would you do in that situation? What would you do if you found out your child was a little bit different? He wasn't gonna be like all the other kids. What would you do? How would you react if you knew for a fact your son was guaranteed to be bullied when he got to school? 
hopefully you do what my dad did. He bullied me first. <laughs> but he did it in a very awesome way. He would make fun of me and he would tell me like, all right, hit me back. Hit me back with something. That's what you're gonna do. Some kid's gonna come up to you. He's gonna make fun of you. What are you gonna do? You're gonna cry about it? No, not my son. You're gonna make him regret saying that to you. You're gonna make him cry about it. That's what you're gonna do. So he molded me. He trained me. He prepared me like Yoda and Luke Skywalker. The sizes were reversed, but you get the idea. So by the time I got to kindergarten, I was a trained verbal assassin. I walked into kindergarten with some swag, like, I hope someone fucks with me today. <laughs> and someone did. Someone did fuck with me. I will never forget this. First day of school, we're all lined up, right? And we're, we're taking roll. This kid runs out of line in front of the entire class, runs right up to me, points his finger in my face, and goes, ha ha, you're little. I looked at him and went, ha ha, your mom doesn't live with your dad anymore. <laughs> tears, tears, tears. I live in California. I had a 50-50 shot at getting that one right. So he starts crying. I get sent to the principal's office. I'm sitting there in the office. It's me, it's the principal, it's the kid. Kid's still crying because he's a bitch. And then the principal looks at me and goes, I can't believe you made him cry. I'm calling your father. Do it. Oh, Roy, right, I'll do it. So he gets the phone out. He calls my dad, gets my dad out of work and says, Mr. Williams, I'm here with your son, Brad. He's in my office today because he made another little boy cry at school. What do you have to say about that? Here's what my dad said. He goes, did he start it or did he finish it? <laughs> dad. I see. I see the old school parents clapping right now because you know what that means. Some of the younger parents are like, what, what are you talking about? Did he start or did he finish it? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter bad. Both children made fun of each other. They should both be punished equally. They should be put in timeout. They should put in timeout, Brad. Timeout means they can't use their Xbox for three minutes. It's not good. They'll think about what they did and then, and then they'll, they'll be done and they'll want to learn something and they'll want to go outside. Now, if, before they go outside though, it's very scary outside. So you want to dip your child in a big vat of Purell. Just dip them in that Purell so there's no germs on them, but you know, they could fall. So you want to be prepared for that. So you put a helmet on them, you put uh, some uh, wrist pads, some elbow pads, some knee pads. And then if they play competitive sports, even if they get last place, you can't hurt their self-esteem. So if they get last place, you give them a three foot tall trophy and at the bottom of it, it says, you're special. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! That's not what you do! Did you start it or did you finish it? Because you're never, ever, ever supposed to start a fight. But if you're in one, you better damn well finish that thing. That's the rule. If you start... If you start a fight, you're an asshole. If you finish it, you're a goddamn hero. That's the difference. So my dad says that to him. The principal goes, well, to be honest with you, he finished it. Then my dad says this on the speakerphone. He goes, well, problem with your school is not my son. Problem with your school is other kids a pussy. Click. <laughs> and like, Woo! I'm dancing around the office. That's my dad. That's my dad. And then I looked at the other kid. I'm like, you see, that's what a father does. You would have no idea what a father does. I'm in therapy. I'm dealing with rage issues right now. Did anybody get hit growing up? Nice. Cool. Yes. Nice. I didn't. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't. <laughs> Losers. <laughs> I got hit, but my dad was like a hippie. That's weird. He would hit, he'd be like, go get a branch so I can beat your ass. But not off the maple. She's germinating. Very strange. Very strange. My sister would beat the shit out of me. I bullied kids, but she would bully. I bullied the wrong kids, dude. I bullied autistic kids. I didn't know they were autistic at the time. I did not mean to. Do you remember the kids who would like rub their dicks on everything? <laughs> you remember those kids? Why was there one kid in every class rubbed his fucking dick on everything? There was one kid who shit in the coat room. I love that kid. That kid, you'd smell the out of water shit and you'd be like, George, did you? And he'd be like, no. But the kid who rubbed his dick on everything, it was great. You guys had that kid, right? And the teacher would be like, just leave him, let him finish, let him come. What do you want me to do? Somebody has to stop him. This kid, the kid I'm thinking about, I ran into him recently. He's like a billionaire. Dude, he used to take his pants down. Anytime the coach would be like, run a lap, he would pull his pants down and then he would just grab his penis and just, ah, just scream on the top of his arms. And I ran into him recently. He's like, a, he fucking is a CEO of some shit. He owns like satellites. I was like, fuck, I shouldn't have called you grip tip for nine years. I apologize. After
after the, after the game, we're in the parking lot, and that's where all the shit starts. <laughs> right? In your car. That's where the shit starts. We're in the car. I'm driving. It's a rental. And we're inching along. And, and you know the cars that have guns. They don't have any bumpers. <laughs> all the windows are black. They got a gun. Right? She don't know that, so I'm like, so we're creeping along. The car, no, no bumper, no license plate, just a Grand Theft Auto car, right? <laughs> it starts inching out, inching back, and it's about to hit our car. My girl says, she goes, aren't you gonna honk the horn? I said, uh, no. <laughs> I don't have my vacation gun. <laughs> on me. Now he's hitting the car. <laughs> she goes, hey, asshole! You're hitting our fucking car! He goes, shut up, bitch! <laughs> to my wife. My wife goes, are you gonna let him talk to me like that? <laughs> I said, bitch! <laughs> he said, shut up! <laughs> Obviously, this man is in a rush. We are in his way, and I apologize. <laughs> it was the quietest ride home ever. I didn't have my vacation gun. I saved her life. She understood it later, man. I want to be tough. That's why I do MMA. I want to be like a guy that's like secretly tough. You know what I mean? That like looks like me, you know, but like can kick ass. You ever see those guys? Like you're at a party and someone's like, you see that guy over there? You can't tell by looking at him, but that guy could kill you, you know? And then I'm just like... Mm. I want to be one of those guys. I'm more a guy like this. I'm like at a party, and people are like, you can't tell by like, looking at that guy? But that guy is very good at softball. You would really be <laughs> impressed. That joke never works, but I just want you guys to know that I'm very good at softball. I think that's important. I know I don't have a tough look, because my first day at MMA, we went over striking. That's like punching and kicking. You pussies probably aren't familiar with this kind of shit, but... We went over striking. My instructor said, when you throw a punch, you want to turn your wrist like you're pouring tea. <laughs> and I was like, I feel like you don't say that to everybody. Somehow. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he just looked at me and was like, you've probably poured tea. Is that something you've done? <laughs> I was like, hell yeah, you shit me? I love tea. That's like my favorite beverage. My first punch was terrible. I had my pinky out and my elbow flare. <laughs> kind of... I've never seen one fight. The guy's like, you want some chamomile, bitch, huh? How about some jasmine? You know? Every time we spar, I say, you're in steep trouble. And I laugh, and he gets mad. It's pretty cute. He's like, you got to stop doing that. I'm like, well, whatever. You brought up the tea thing. I'm just trying to have a nice time here. I've been getting a lot of uh, altercations with people recently. I got into a fight at the airport. I have rage issues. Here's what happened. I'll tell you about it. So my sister is a cunt, okay? We're, we're getting along better now because she had a child that I... Do you, guys, do you guys have nieces and nephews? Yes. It's the best, dude. It's the best. You just play with them for four minutes and then punt them the fuck out of there. You know what I mean? And you're the crazy aunt. <laughs> you know what I mean? I love this kid. All the Italian in my family got funneled into this bitch. Okay, it's crazy. She came out a little mafia, baby. I love her, dude. She has like a cigar, okay? She, have you ever gotten a tour from a toddler before? I hate everything and I love these tours. I love them. I, when, when people ask me for tours, that's my nightmare, dude. When like grown people are like, you want a tour of the, I used to be a contractor. It's triggering, dude. Then you want a tour of the bedroom? You want a tour of the, you want a grand tour of the house? Here, this is the backsplash we put up in July. This is the crown molding we added in my, I'm like, show me the roof so I can jump off the roof. Show me the roof. The tour from a toddler, though, dude, she, every time she gives me a tour of her bedroom, I feel like the newest recruit in The Sopranos. She's like, come with me for a second, come with me. This is my dolly named Gwen. This is my bear, also named Gwen. <laughs> she's like, that over there, that's my bed. I was like, is its name Gwen too? And she's like, please don't be a silly goose. Okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, so my sister, she's a bit of a cunt. Actually, I have a theory that she would be very good in fighting the war against AI. Hear me out, ready? Are you guys afraid of AI? Chachapetto, my boy? 
I don't mind chat. I don't know why we're so afraid of it. He's the best. We had the chat bot. You remember the chat bot in AIM? Where you'd be like 13 and you're like, how do I kill myself? You remember him. You remember him. <laughs> we, but I, here's my theory. Okay. I've been, I've been having some theories. I think Chat Chepetto is a distraction from the Boston Dynamic Robots. <laughs> Have you seen these guys? Why are we not talking about a couple? Okay, for those who don't know, a couple years back, Boston Dynamics, they create robots. They created one called Big Dog, which is a diversionary tactic. They were like, he's a doggy. He's just a guy. He's just a, it's not a dog. It is a horse with no neck or head. It is terrifying. It has joints that are like on backwards, like Cloverfield. It's this tall. You can't kick it over. It just corrects it. It's so scary. It's hor It's a Babadook kind of thing. It's awful. And we were like, I don't, we don't like Big Dog, Big Dog's scary. And they're like, okay, we'll put him up on two legs. We'll give him a fucking head, you know, maybe a gun. And we were like, oh, you made a man. You made a scary man. They have this fucked up commercial that they do. I hate it. Uh, okay. So <laughs> they have a contractor working and then he like, you know, hits a button and this robot comes in and gives him lumber. I hate this. I used to be a contractor. The only little guys we need on a job site are, say it with me, Mexican day laborers. <laughs> yes. They are the best, especially in New York. You, I drive my truck to Home Depot, kick open the door, they pile in. I have to be like, only the young ones, only the young ones. <laughs> oh, I love them. I don't speak any Spanish and we are laughing the whole way. When people ask me, when they're like, oh, you do carpentry, like Jesus? I'm like, more like Jesus, if I'm being honest with you. <laughs> then they make a video. First of all, they make a fleet of these robots. They give them guns. And then they're like, don't worry about it. We'll show you this. We'll let, watch this. They won't, they won't shoot human beings, okay? And then they send in all these army dudes to go in and like fuck with these robots. Like they're pushing it, they're bullying it. They're basically calling these guys fags, right? It's crazy. <laughs> and they're like, see, they're not shooting the, the men. They're shooting at the targets. I was like, you need to send in a woman. If we want to figure out if we can make a masculine force turn against all of society, send in a woman. We are experts. I can make a man hit me in the face with one laugh. <laughs> one laugh. Ready? I'm gonna do it. This is it, okay? <laughs> that's just air. That was just air, dude. That's all it takes. I think that's how witches got started. I think some dude in the 1400s pulled his dick out and was like, what do you think? And she was like, <clears throat> and he was like, burn her. <laughs> You wanna see if these, if they'll turn against us? You gotta send my sister in there. She is, per I'm gonna do an impression of her and I apologize in advance, okay? This is my sister. Send her into the army base, okay, ready? Okay. I don't know how you live in your house, Jordan. I have no idea. That's none of my business. This is really good. It's none of my concern, okay? But in this house where we live, call me crazy. But when we open a bread bag, we actually Close it when we're done with We're dead. We're dead. We're out. I'm dead. We're done. Anyway, that's how I feel about that. <sighs> so I was in the Target and I pulled into a checkout line. All of a sudden, this lady came up behind me, tapped me on the shoulder, and she said, Excuse me, I was about to pay. Before I could say anything, I was just going to move out of the way. But then she said, How stupid are you? Then she said, How stupid are your people? And that's what made me freeze. I was just standing there now, and she just starts yelling at me. Two minutes have gone by. Two minutes of a random person yelling at you in a public place is a long, long time. People in Target have stopped what they're doing and have formed a little UFC ring around this lady and I. <laughs> and I haven't said a single word to her yet. I was waiting for the right opportunity and she gave it to me. She goes, so what do you have to say for yourself? I paused, I looked her dead in the eyes and I went, I'm sorry. <laughs> she ended up paying for my stuff. <laughs> but I was buying AirPods, so she really didn't understand the whole me being deaf thing. <laughs> she walked me out of the store. She was apologizing. She's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to do that to you. I just gave her a big hug and I said, how stupid are you? <laughs> so I developed these rage issues that get me into a lot of trouble. For instance, I'm in Dallas, Texas. I'm at the airport. I'm late. 
I'm putting my shit on the conveyor belt. I'm already hot. You know what I mean? I'm already got the rage going, right? I'm ready to fight, okay? And I put my laptop on the thing. And then this kid standing next to me, he's like 6'4", maybe 19 years old, Princeton sweatshirt, boat shoes, gangly, <laughs> acne. <laughs> He throws his jacket onto my laptop as it goes through, and I'm like, fuck, they're gonna have to pull that. They're gonna have to pull it. I'm breathing, I'm breathing, right? And the guy pulls it out, and he goes, we have to run this all the way back to the beginning. And I was like, sir, I'm gonna miss my flight if you do that. Don't do this. Get a dog to sniff it. Please do anything. And he goes, I'm sorry. And then he goes, whose jacket is this? The kid he heard everything I said. He heard I'm gonna miss my flight. Whose jacket? The kid goes, yeah. Takes the jacket, doesn't say anything to me. Goes to walk away. I turned to him, and very, I felt it was, I think it was, I said this, I said, listen, next time, keep your own fucking piece of shit jacket to your own fucking piece of shit bit. I might have said a little more, but I was blacked out at this point. I was a little blacked out. So then, I'm, I'm furious, right? I'm so mad that he didn't apologize. I'm, I'm thinking about it, I'm playing it in my head. I'm like, oh, I'm just fucking kill it. It's gonna rip my part, right? But he's gone, I've let him go. I'm evolved. But then I feel a tap on my shoulder and I'm like, let's go. And I turn, it's not him. He's hiding over there behind some woman. Instead, it's this stocky, like, 5'9", jacked, middle-aged dude, red face. And I'm like, fuck, I can't fight this, like, Bostonian father right now, right? <laughs> but then, you guys, the grace of God, he opens his mouth, and he goes, don't talk to my son that way. And I was like, oh, are you British, bitch? Are you British right now? Oh, you have fucked up. And I lost my mind on this guy. I mean, I lo I don't know what it is about him being a potato guy, but I lost it, man. I freaked the fuck. I was like, don't talk to your son that way. I was like, what are you doing right now? You're emasculating your boy. He's over there hiding behind his mommy. He can't talk to a woman himself. All these people are watching. He's gonna be a little bitch his whole life because of you. And then, <laughs> and then, I watch the, the father get, he gets so mad, but I see his little ears go back a tiny bit and I know that he, he knows that what I'm saying is true and that his son will always be eh, and never uh, so long as he does this. And then he's barking at me. The mom, I see the mom realize that I'm a masculine and the father and she slid in so fast. Like, no, 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 no. I only come once a year like that. <laughs> She's on me. She's like, he can't take one more of these, right? And she's on me like this. He's on me like this. We're hollering at each other, going crazy. You know what I mean? I'm like, your boy's gonna be weak and it's gonna be your fault. And then at this time, just know the whole time, there are seven TSA workers who are laughing hysterically. All black dudes, okay? I am crushing with these guys. I am crushing. Finally, one of them slid in between us, okay, just when it was getting as heated as it could get. He steps in between us and he goes, break it up. I don't know if you know that feeling, but that is the best feeling. It truly is. I mean, it just, it means you can go off, but you're not gonna get hit, right? So I just, anything I had, I launched. They're launching at me, I'm getting there, they're walking away. I'm like, you better walk away. I was like, you guys better Google Jordan Peterson because he's gonna keep holding me, keep holding me, keep holding me. He's gonna need a man in his life. I was like, he's never gonna be able to pleasure a woman for the love of God. I think at one point, this is when I came to, is when I was like, try beating his head into a dryer, that'll make him a man. Oh, so yes, I'm in therapy, court ordered. Thanks guys. We got into a fight recently in an Uber, so we have a witness. It was a miscommunication fight, classic Saturday night, we were going from one party to another, and she turns to me and she says, hey, you didn't pick up on any of my hints. I don't want to go to this party. And I was like, uh, what were some of your hints? And she said, when I went, <sighs> I was like, why didn't you just say you didn't want to go to the party? She said, I don't want to just have to say it. I want you to pick up on my hints. And I was like, okay, bitch. <laughs> I was, like, I was like, let's just go home. I tried rerouting the Uber. You ever tried doing that? Cost $9,000. <laughs> so we got dropped off at the second party. I was like, no, we're not even going inside. I'm calling another Uber. We're going home. We get in that second Uber. We go home. We're mad at each other. We're slamming one door, brushing teeth, all angry. She gets into bed. I get into bed. You ever tried laying in bed next to someone who's mad at you? It's impossible. You feel all that adrenaline going through your body. And back in the day, people used to give this stupid piece of advice. Fix it before you go to sleep. Don't go to bed angry. Fix it before you go to sleep. Nowadays, you go to sleep any way you fucking can. Because guess what? This problem's not gonna get fixed tonight. It's actually never gonna get fixed. It's gonna come up anytime she wants to bring it up. 
10 years from now, she'll be like, remember that one time you didn't hear me when I didn't want to go to this party? And I'd be like, yeah, bitch, I do remember that shit. <laughs> so you just gotta lay there, right? You gotta lay in bed, they're laying in bed. You wanna kill them, but you can't because everybody's got a ring camera. So you just lay there. I, I feel like a piece of corn, you know? Just like, don't move, don't roll over, just stay still. Because if you move, then they're gonna turn and be like, are you awake? And then you have to be like, yeah. And then they win. So you wanna be careful not to do that. That night she was like, do you wanna talk about it? And I turned to her and I was like, 